So I wanted to give a little summary of the different books that are available on the apparitions at Garabandal and to give a little bit of re review for each one of them so you can decide which book you're going to read on the apparitions. So let's start off with the Diary of Conchita. That's right, so the, the main seer of Garabandal, Conchita, wrote a diary about her life during the time of the apparitions and you can read her diary online. It's a lot of the books that I'm going to mention are all available online. I think it's a group, um, the workers of Our Lady of Mount Carmel have put all of the books on the internet, not all of them, but a lot of the books I'm going to mention are, are available for you to download in English and Spanish. So Conchita's diary is, is really interesting. It's written by the girl herself when she was 12 years old. So, and going up to when she was age um, 16 years old. So the language is quite childish in some parts and you get her actual impressions of the apparitions. So the account is not not the best one though, because there are some things lacking. There's some things lacking. It's, it's a diary where sometimes she gives you a lot of details and sometimes she gives you very few details. Also, secondarily, there is the fact that she revised the diary, that she, she wrote entries and then later on she went back and changed entries a little bit. So perhaps in terms of reliability, it's not going to be as reliable as, as, as other more objective accounts of the supposed apparitions at Garabandal. But if you want to get into the spirituality and the life and the mind of this girl who, who either invented these apparitions or really saw Our Lady, well, you, you can't get a better start than to read her diary. And it's not a super long book either. You can read it in a couple of days. The second one then, in terms, again, looking at early manuscripts, is the diary of Don Valentin, the priest who was a parish priest at the time of the apparitions of Garabandal. And again, his, his diary uh, lacks, lacks the depth of a narrative that you'll get in some of the other books I'm going to talk about. It's not a flowing narrative of events. It's point by point what happened each day. But there are some really, really interesting features to his diary and you can compare it to Conchita's to see how they can, how they contrast, what features are exactly the same. One of the, one of the things he does mention and Conchita doesn't mention is the incident with the, the angel showing the children his teeth and the angel admiring the children's teeth. You know, this strange bit of detail that, that Conchita doesn't give for her account of the early apparitions of the angel, but he remembered that and he put it down in his diary. It's worth remembering that Don Valentin was a believer in the apparitions and in the end, the bishop had him booted out of the parish because he was too strong a supporter for the apparitions. So he's a believer in the apparitions. And so, again, you've got to take that into perspective as you read his diary, because presumably as he's writing the diary and as you get later entries, then he's writing from a position of, of belief. It's not as long as Conchita's diary from my recollection. It's quite a short read. Now, from, from a short read to a long read, the trilogy of books, She Went in Haste to the Mountains. Now, this trilogy of books is very lengthy. I think in total, if I can remember, we're, we're over a thousand pages anyway, as you read the, the three books. And this is a re this is the summary of the message of Garabandal or of what happened there in Garabandal. And I've got to say the author, the author has, has laid it all out there. He hasn't hidden details that are embarrassing. He's not hidden away the disagreements between the, the visionaries. He's not hidden away some of the more shadow sides of the apparitions, some of the feigned ecstasies, things like that. It's all there in his book. And again, he's someone who believes in the apparitions, but it's a, it's a qualified belief. And actually, that's why I really like this set of books, because as you get to the end of the book, at the end of the third book, he talks about the different levels of of credence 
in the in the apparitions of Garabandal, the different different things, the different aspects of the apparitions that are more credible than other aspects. So, for example, he says things like, well, we take, for instance, the ecstatic marches as more credible than, for example, the locution that that um, Conchita says that she has in the year 1965. So he puts he, he gives a kind of hierarchy of truths for Garabandal, which I found really interesting. And also it was something that, that I could really agree with. I could really take some agreement with that, that there's a level of certain things about Garabandal that are more credible than, than other elements. It's an excellent set of books, but it's not a light read. It's going to take you quite a long time to get through these books. It took me quite a while. I used to read it every night before going to bed. And I was reading it. I was reading this set of books in preparation for my first visit to Garabandal, which was three years ago now. So if you have the time and if you really want to go deeper, then this is, this is the set of books for you. The next book, Garabandal, The Village Speaks. This is an interesting book, and this is definitely a deep dive book. This isn't the first book you should read about Garabandal. This is like the, the fifth book you should read about Garabandal, because Garabandal, The Village Speaks, takes quite a lot for granted. It's presuming that you, although actually there's, there's actually in the, the introductory section of the book, there's quite a good overview of the apparitions as a, of, as a whole. But the, but the largest part of the book is giving you pictures of different villages. And the book was written, I think, within 10 years after the completion of the apparitions. And so you get these lovely pictures of these Spanish characters, uh, little families or husband and wife, and a little picture of them as they were in 1975. And, 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 it, and, and, it, and it's got first-hand interviews written in the first person. And the individual is interviewed by the author of the book, and he puts out what each of these villagers experienced at the time of the apparitions. So it's, it's a really good bit of observation from the interviewer. And he wrote this book, or this book was written largely as a result of the disappointment in the first commission to investigate Garabandal. It was felt that villagers had not been interviewed and the data had not been put out there. So this author went around and he collected the testimonies uh, in, and presented them in this book so that the world could know that, that the people of the village really did believe in the events that were occurring and it really touched their lives. Okay, so the next book now is, I think, the most recent book, the book written by uh, Father Jose Luis Saavedra, and it's called in English, I think, Garabandal Message of Hope. And this is a this is a, a good summary of the the visions in Garabandal. It's uh, it's a book that's about three hundred pages long. It covers it covers a lot of the key aspects of the messages in Garabandal. It's written in a modern, slightly academic style. I think it's it's a shortened version of his doctoral thesis on the apparitions of Garabandal. And he, he draws various bits of data from the apparitions and he, he sees himself as critically evaluating some of the sources. Some of the things I've, some of the books I've just mentioned, um, Father Jose Luis will, will critically consider uh, their evidence uh, and, and weigh them up in order to present uh, a construction of what actually happened in Garabandal. Again, he's writing from a position of someone who thoroughly believes in the truth of the apparitions. One, and in addition to analysing the documents I've already mentioned by the parish priest and Conchita, he also draws in evidence from the various commissions and the various doctors and psychologists who saw the children in the days of the apparitions. And he presents he presents their findings. He tells you which psychologists had thought that the children were making it up and he tells us which doctors thought that they were genuine and that's all at the towards the end of the book 
Also, one of the other advantages of his book is it doesn't shy away from exploring some of the shadow sides of the apparitions. It talks about the faked ecstasies and tries to give an explanation for them. And also what he does well is, is he puts it into context of the spiritual life. So you get quite a lot of comparisons between the seers of Garabandal and the spiritual development of various saints in the history of the church and showing how some of the difficulties they experienced were paralleled by other saints and also some of the mystical phenomena at Garabandal that you might think are, are pretty weird, the ecstatic marches for instance. He finds uh, he finds similar occurrences in the life of, of, of lives of other saints and he brings them to the forefront. So it's it's a it's a book that's, that's to be commended and it's a book that's that's well worth reading. I don't think I would recommend it for someone that just wants a quick read and wants to gloss over. It's a book that does require a bit of thinking because it's written in, in more of an academic style and it's a book that um, has plenty of footnotes and lots of references at the bottom. It's not a kind of book that you just quickly read while your children are watching the television or something, but it's a really good read nonetheless. Okay. So the next book is The Mystery of Garabandal, Fantasy or Fraud, Ghost or God, with a very provocative title. And this was the first book I read on Garabandal. So it shows you how recently I have come to know about these apparitions. I'd seen videos when I was a teenager about Garabandal on CDs that had been lent to me, but I hadn't studied the apparitions. And this book was the first one that I bought. And actually, I, I didn't buy it properly. I, I got it on Kindle Unlimited, I think. It was, a, it was one of those Kindle Unlimited books that you can borrow uh, for without, without paying anything on a free trial of Kindle Unlimited. And actually, the book has got a lot going for it. Uh, on the real positive side, it takes it takes a, an overall approach of sitting on the fence. The author is clearly someone who isn't sure whether to believe in the apparitions or not. And that's something that chimes well with me because he admits, he points out the real shadow sides of the apparitions. And also he points out the really amazing bits of the apparitions. And he kind of puts both sides on a balance. And he then looks, well, which side is the balance heavier? If you're looking for a simple conclusion where the author says, yes, I'm a firm believer in the apparitions, or no, these apparitions are false, this isn't the book for you because this author finishes the book with mystery. He ends the book saying, I'm not really sure I'd like to believe in the apparitions, but there's so many things that make it hard to believe in them. Sometimes I do believe in them. Sometimes I don't believe in them. And I, I like that in conclusion, but it's not going to be for everyone. One of the negative sides to this book, however, is that it keeps making reference to the apparitions at Medjugorje. And he tries to tie in the apparitions of Medjugorje and Garabandal. And I'm pretty certain that the two apparitions are mutually exclusive. And I'm not sure why he... It, there's a bit of filler. Basically, the book's got a bit of filler where he decides to tell you about the apparitions in Medjugorje to take up 50 pages or so, even though it really doesn't have anything to do with the apparitions at Garabandal. He's just trying to fill a bit of space. So that was disappointing. But if it's still on Kindle Unlimited and you are a member of Kindle Unlimited, well, I definitely recommend downloading this one and making it the first of the books you read on Garabandal. Okay, now, last of all, there's this final book by Ed Kelly, A Walk to Garabandal. Now, this book is really fascinating because it's the personal diary almost, the personal journey of a man who first went to Garabandal in the 70s as a Spanish teacher who just happened to stumble across the apparitions. They had finished by then, but he just happened to stumble across the village by, by various people mentioning it to him and getting curious, going to have a look and going there and staying, staying at the tavern that, um, that Loli's family owned. And he gives us he gives us a year by year presentation of his visits to Garabandal. He went he went there back and forth and he's been there back and forth over the last 50 years, I suppose. 
and he gives us little updates on how the village has changed, how the people have changed, what the impression of the villagers with regards to the apparitions is. One of the things I really like about the book is he really captures how the villagers of Garabandal, they kind of initially show a bit of a scepticism about the apparitions. But then if you get them, if they happen to talk about what actually happened, their own personal experience, all of a sudden their eyes light up and they reveal extraordinary things that they saw and that they heard and that they're still processing. And and on my visits to Garabandal, I have found that. I've only been there twice, but when you get some of those villagers, when they choose to open up to you about what they saw or heard, all of a sudden their eyes light up and you can see there's something special, special going that they're remembering. So Ed Kelly's book, Ed Kelly's book, I would say, again, is probably not the first book that you should read on Garabandal. But if you are interested in the apparitions and if you're interested in the personalities, the, 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 the children as they grew up and, and if you're interested in the village, if you're interested in, in the whole story of Garabandal, then his book is, is definitely one to read. I only read it, I read it just before I went to Garabandal last year as a preparation and I really enjoyed it. It's a, it's a thoroughly entertaining book as well. And you learn something about this author and how Garabandal has touched his life and helped him to grow in the spiritual life. So there are a list of books that you can read on Garabandal. And let me know if you've read another book on Garabandal that I haven't read, that I ought to read. Let me know in the comments. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.